So uh, yes, uh, Professor Hans, um, you you know you have been working for let's say around three decades now in the Onco region, but I just want to ask you, you know, because um, it has been a very 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 long time for you, you know, to see heritage to restore heritage, and I also heard that you know you also used to work on you know the heritage in Egypt, you know, one of the biggest and also a very long old civilization on Earth, sir. So. For Onko, you know, since you were young, when was the first time you hear about the word Onko Wat, or maybe the image of Onko Wat to you, sir? Actually, I don't know, really. <laughs> But uh, maybe this was in the 60s or 70s. There was an, uh, an uh, report about Onko in the uh, National Geographic. Graphic magazine, yes, and uh, there I saw the pictures and thought this should be a place where I should go once in my life. Uh, but uh, of course, at that time it was my, more the idea of a visit, like a tourist to see it, uh, like we have been in South America or in other places. I didn't think about uh, a work uh, there, uh, especially uh, at that time. I was far as I remember. I was still studying. I did my PhD, mm. and uh, uh, I did my PhD in South Africa. It was yes, still pure geology, uh, so I was not thinking about heritage preservation. But uh, the pictures were extreme. Uh, yeah, input, uh, especially of course the problem with the trees, but also the huge, huge Angkor Wat temple, and. Uh, Then uh, in yeah it was in 1995 or 1994, a colleague uh, of my uh, from my university approached me. Yes, sir. He was teaching uh, uh, physics and optics, and he was also a photographer. And he had the idea to do uh, the uh, documentation, photographic documentation of the bas reliefs with mm. a speci specific camera, mm. Yaro Ponka. And uh, so, 1995, we came together, yes, uh, and he did the work there, and I started to survey, yeah, to learn about what is Angkor, what is Angkor Wat. So the first yeah. time you came to Angkor was 1995. 1995 sir. in spring, yeah, and uh, of course, I one of the tasks was in this cooperation with my colleague also to look on the condition of the bas reliefs yes, and uh, if. Um, special, uh, the uh, photographs he was making were uh, able or were good for the documentation in heritage preservation, etc. But uh, of course, I was long time in the Basreliefs gallery with them, but I observed also, had a look all around, and there I saw these uh, strange damages. Yeah, yes, and. Uh, For me, it was it looked very familiar, because we had projects in Germany on churches, castles, etc., mm. where we had similar damages. So the picture of scaling was very similar, and uh, from this point, I was so interested that I said, "Of course, let's start a project." I didn't think about to have a very long-lasting cons conservation project, mm. but to have a research project on the uh, materials and on the decay phenomena in Angkor. And this was, I started the survey in Angkor as well, and I recognized, of course, the uh, monasteries uh, in the forest are different. Yeah, mm. uh, I saw Pantas Ray and I was really flashed yeah, the about the condition, yeah. the wonderful oh. condition of the carvings and this very, very good state of preservation. Oh. So this was the beginning to think about what is the reason. And I took first small samples at oh. that time and did the insection analysis in the, on the microscope oh, and recognized, oh, this stone material is very similar to the one in Germany, where we have also the scaling. So what is the, what is the difference? Mm. And it came out, even we as a geologist 
cannot really see whether this piece is coming from Angkor Wat or from, from one of the churches. Yeah. This stone material is so identically, yeah, also in its whole behavior. Uh, of course, so we continued with the study here and we, the decision was to stay in Angkor Wat because we have, have the bad damaged uh, bus reliefs, especially on the Apsara and uh, now, yeah, yes, sir. we're thinking what else can we do? And then we started to think about a proposal for a project of conservation, yes. of protection. So you take your expertise in preservation, restoration in Germany, and then you apply on Uncle because the material, they are more or less similar, sir. Yeah, actually, yes. Uh, at that time, uh, I was working in the in a, a German, uh, the Bavarian Heritage Office. Mm. So we were responsible for the heritage in, in the uh, part of Germany, which is called Bavaria. Yeah? Yes, sir. And there we did a lot of research. We had a research program over uh, at least uh, nearly 10 years. Uh, where we surveyed uh, uh, all the objects in in whole Germany. This was uh, over the borders of Bavaria. And uh, so we had a yeah, long and, and big experience on the on the uh, weathering processes on monuments, on sandstone man monuments. Yes, and of course, also we did a specific conservation project projects in Germany as well, uh, starting from from the uh, uh, from zero to develop a project, what is the best way to preserve. Uh, also to develop uh, materials, to adapt materials, to modify materials. And with this low knowledge I came here, yeah, but I didn't think we have to copy what we are doing in Germany one to one yes. here. We have different climate, we have different uh, uh, yeah, uh, influences of weathering. We have the beds, of course, in Germany, we have a lot of tufts, yeah, with bed deposits. We have a lot of pollution in the cities, so this is different. In winter, we have frost, yeah. Mm. We have no frost here, of course, but, but we have humid, much humid. more rain in the specific season, etc. So the climatic conditions are, are also not comparable. Mm. Therefore, you cannot copy one to one from here to there. That's why we did a lot of investigations first here before we started with any development of conservation. And of course, we had a certain knowledge what materials we can use, what materials mm -hmm. for the conservation we should use, following our philosophy. Uh, but we tried to develop it here from, from the scratch as well mm -hmm. and modify as far as necessary. Yes, sir. Um, about a year ago, uh, my supervisor uh, interviewed uh, Professor Munir Bushnaki, mm -hmm. and uh, he remarked on one, uh, you know, let's say a philosophical idea. He said the stones are speaking. So you, as an expert, you know, working on the stone, you know, very, very precisely, very de in detail. Mm -hmm. How do you interpret his ideas? Uh, like, what do you mean when he says the stones are speaking? Of course, I mean they don't literally speak. But you, you maybe you, you, you understand them, mm -hmm. you feel them, you know, you feel them, they're Actually, aging. Sometimes uh, we listen <laughs> to them, really. Uh, oh, you okay. have seen, we knock. Mm. <laughs> so this is a sort of speaking of the stone, yeah, of the damage. Mm. Sometimes we had a stethoscope in former times. We tried mm. if this is helpful to to analyze the damages. Uh, yeah, actually, first of all, I think it's necessary yeah. that uh, the specialization we have uh, first in geology to know about the stones and mm. to learn from what we can see and second in conservation. Yeah? Mm. Uh, the stone is not speaking itself. We have to look and see what the stone wants to say to us. Mm. And the first thing is, of course, how it looks like. And as a geologist, we can separate uh, already by looking at it and uh, having speci specific research technique like thin, se thin section uh, analysis, microscopic thin section analysis, uh, scanning electron, etc. I explained before. Mm. Uh, yes, to to uh, This is what 
the 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 stone is saying us from its uh, from its material. Yeah, we have to analyze it. Yeah, and this is something we learned by heart uh, yes, during our study as geologists, of course, uh, to understand what what is the material, what is it, this, its behavior, etc. Yes, sir. And then we have to listen also to the bas reliefs and mm -hmm. learn from the condition and what we can see and what we can get from our research that we can really uh, develop uh, applied mm -hmm. methods for the conservation and yes, adapted and uh, well uh, well tailored mm -hmm. materials for the for the conservation. Yeah. Just so so we it, have yeah. to listen, ex listen look to and listen, yeah. We ask them by yeah. knocking, yeah. by studying yeah. them and then... We have to study know. them uh, in detail, them. yeah. And uh, actually in Europe, a lot of geologists, and uh, this is one point uh, I wanted to mention, uh, a lot of uh, geologists or geoscientists are in the field of heritage preservation. Mm -hmm. uh, beside the other disciplines, chemists, uh, material scientists, engineer, architects, archaeologists, arch etc. And this is the, for me, the most advantage of this part, uh, what we are doing, that we have the possibility of this interdisciplinary uh, approaches, uh, interdisciplinary uh, uh, work. Yeah. Yes. Uh, if some of these fields are missing, yeah, it's not complete and it will not... Uh, get the the best results at least yeah the yes, material scientists they know we learn from them yeah uh, as a conservation scientist how to test in specific specific uh, parameters yeah mm -hmm. the chemists say said us what is the specificity of the chemical we are using how can we use it uh, what must be the condition when we apply ethyl silicate, etc. Yeah, the chemist knows much better the mm. behavior of these materials. Yeah, yes, and uh, so this is necessary that we have this interdisciplinary work together. And one more point, uh, I think it was last year we met uh, uh, the, uh, the responsible persons in the ITC, the geologists or yes, geos technologists. Yeah, Mr. Changdun. And we had a very nice exchange and we met them now again because they are now doing some research on the underground at Prea Vihir Temple. Mm. So I hope that they also will come to Angkor and they will be the next future of our, us ge scientists, mm. geologists, scientists, yes, and become also together with the team conservation scientists. Yeah? Uh, they are really urgent as well to support the archaeologists yeah in detail the architects specific on the material of the building yeah the stone yes sir the very last question also mr professor muni bushnaki he said uncle is a place to no sorry not 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 him i'm sorry uh, mr professor Bechaouche. Bechaouche, yes. yeah. he said uncle in, in french of course he said uncle is a place to visit and revisit so not just, you know, come, you come for one time and then, okay, you, you understand everything about Onko and then you, you should not come again. So from your perspective, sir, do you think that Onko is a place that you should come again and again because there are so many things to learn from? The culture, the tradition, and especially the scientific side of, of Onko, let's say? Yeah, actually, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> actually, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you did come many times, but yeah. And it was clear yeah. after my first visit that uh, it was very clear that I have to come back. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah. Not only to do continue research, but also to learn from uh, about the temples, to learn from the temples, to learn from the people. Yeah. Uh, of course, at that time, we didn't meet yet. Yeah, we only met later. Uh, but... Uh, from the beginning, 1997, with uh, our first uh, trainees, we had a uh, real exchange. Uh, they knew a lot about the temples, which we have st still had to learn. Yeah. So, of course, this is clear. From one visit, you cannot uh, learn get enough. Get the whole of Hong Kong. No, 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 no cannot okay. get at least. And we know from most of the visitors who stay three days, they have one, two, three temples and finish. Mm. So, 
uh, even now, from some time to time, we discover new, uh, new information, new pictures, new bus reliefs, which are astonishing. And of course, uh, we are not trained in iconography or art history, etc. So we had a long uh, uh, cooperation with. Uh, uh, with um, iconographists, uh, art historians, uh, 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 Professor Thomas Maxwell was uh, teaching his whole uh, career in Germany, Indian art history, and then moved to Cambodia after he retired and studied Angkor and inscription of Angkor. And so we had a regular exchange and we learned from him and he learned from us. So this is what we call interdisciplinary. Yeah? Yes, sir. Uh, Vittoria Roveda is the one who made the uh, books about iconography and art history in Angkor. And yeah, from them we learned a lot, And uh, but nevertheless we are not uh, uh, yeah, art historians, still not art historians. We mainly focus on our field, uh, the preservation of the monuments, and uh, uh, we are still doing a lot of research. Uh, from yes, time to time, also now for for Coquer, the materials are different. Preavir, the diff materials are different. I uh, is initiated. I'm an ad hoc expert for NAPV. Uh, also, that the geo scientists, uh, geotechnologists from from ITC should once go there and make a survey about the bedrock, about the tectonic structures, etc. Which I feel. Uh, I saw it immediately, everywhere, faults and cracks and fractures, huge faults. Uh, but you have to do a detailed survey, and now they did, and now we increase the knowledge there as well. So this is wonderful to see. So that is the, let's say, the general meaning of yeah. visit and revisit, so yeah. because there's so much to learn. Yeah. Actually, okay. once I had a colleague from my university who was teaching in uh, panel painting and canvas painting uh, conservation, and he once visited us, he was in a group tour mm. and they mainly visited Thailand and he had the possibility to escape to visit us. Yeah, mm. This was the only reason because we are working here, he said, I want to see you. And he was flashed when he saw everything and he said, oh, the journey is totally the wrong way. We should stay one day in Thailand and the rest in Cambodia in Angkor. Yeah? There's yeah. so much to see and so much to learn. And of course, uh, it's necessary to, to come and come and if you learn. Normal yes, tourists should stay at least longer than three days that they have the possibility to go more in detail. Yeah? Yes, sir.